Hey everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe. If you're a regulated fleet or a commercial driver, then you know there's no shortage of records you're required to maintain. Driver qualification files, accident registers, insurance information, driver logs, drug and alcohol test results, just to name a few. One particularly important group of documents on that list are those pertaining to the maintenance of your commercial vehicles. But what exactly do the regulations require you to keep? That's what we're discussing in this video, so stay tuned and do us a favor by hitting those like and subscribe buttons below if you find this type of content helpful. Part 396 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations compels motor carriers and their drivers to properly inspect and maintain their equipment and document their efforts to do so in a compliant maintenance file. As with any other regulated files, these records are subject to audit and can really cost you if not properly maintained. Why is this the case? Well, it should really go without saying that operating poorly maintained heavy vehicles on public roadways can be dangerous. FMCSA data suggests that on average, around 22% of all commercial vehicles stopped for roadside inspections get placed out of service for serious maintenance related defects. Now, certainly some of these issues stem from normal road wear and tear, but the reality is that many of these issues could and should have been discovered by the carrier and or its driver through routine inspections. Maintenance related record keeping obligations are the way the FMCSA requires carriers to keep tabs on this. Now as a preliminary matter, part 396 of the federal safety regulations require motor carriers to generate and maintain maintenance files on all commercial motor vehicles that are subject to their control for 30 or more days, which essentially encompasses all owned equipment and rented or leased equipment with terms of longer than 30 days. In another video, we broke down specifically what types of vehicles are included in the regulatory definition of commercial motor vehicle, or CMV for short, and thus subject to this requirement. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. So what exactly do the regulations require of fleets when it comes to vehicle maintenance files? Well, let's break it down. The first and most basic items that every compliant vehicle maintenance file must contain, per part 396, of the federal safety regulations are basic identifying information for the subject vehicles. This includes both power units and trailers. More specifically, section 396.3 requires motor carriers to keep the following data points for all regulated equipment. An identification of the vehicle, including its company number or unit number, if so marked, the make, the VIN, year, and tire size. In addition, if the motor vehicle is not owned by the motor carrier, the record shall identify the name of the person furnishing the vehicle. In practice, these data points are typically listed on some sort of a cover sheet to paper-based maintenance files or on an equipment profile tab in an electronic file. Failing to have any one of these required data points can, and routinely does, lead to problems in an FMCSA investigation. For example, we've been involved in several DOT audits in which carriers have been written up and fined for failing to keep track of the tire size of their commercial vehicles. All right, next up, a compliant vehicle maintenance file must include up-to-date periodic inspection reports for all regulated equipment, again, power units and trailers. In particular, section 396.17 of the regulations requires motor carriers to at least annually have their commercial vehicles inspected pursuant to the criteria set forth in Appendix A to Part 396. Now, these inspections are often referred to as DOT annual inspections, and the reports generated from them must be retained in each vehicle's maintenance file. More specifically, the regulations require carriers to maintain such reports covering the last 14 months, which means carriers must keep the current and the last periodic inspection report for each regulated vehicle. A copy of that report or a sticker evidencing the details of the inspection must also be kept on the vehicles themselves and produced to law enforcement on demand. Along similar lines, the regulations also technically require motor carriers to maintain records of inspector qualifications. Section 396.19 provides that motor carriers and intermodal equipment providers must retain evidence of that individual's qualifications under this section. They must retain this evidence for the period during which that individual is performing annual motor vehicle inspections for the motor carrier or the intermodal equipment provider and for one year thereafter. However, motor carrier and intermodal equipment providers do not have to maintain documentation of inspector qualifications for those inspections performed as part of a state periodic inspection program. Now the same holds true for any inspectors carriers use to conduct brake inspections. 
On a related note for passenger carriers specifically, the regulations also require you to maintain records of tests conducted on push-out windows, emergency doors, and emergency door marking lights on buses. Okay, aside from periodically inspecting their commercial equipment, carriers also have a regulatory obligation to systematically maintain and repair it. In other words, carriers must have a preventative maintenance program in place to ensure that their vehicles remain in proper working condition at all times. Now, when it comes to record keeping for preventative maintenance, the regulations require carriers to have, number one, a means to indicate the nature and due date of the various inspection and maintenance operations to be performed, and then number two, a record of all such maintenance performed, including the date and the nature of that maintenance. So in short, carriers need to have PM schedules for all of their regulated equipment, indicating the frequency at which they will perform any PM services or required inspections. In addition, they need to keep records of any such maintenance that is performed, for example, repair orders, invoices, etc., in the maintenance files for all of their equipment. Failing to stick to the PM schedule or keep records of that maintenance performed can lead to violations in an audit, and it can also create additional exposure in highway accident litigation. Now, what PM schedule you keep is really up to you, but sticking to the recommended schedule set by the equipment manufacturer is often the best. Carriers have an obligation to retain preventative maintenance documentation for a period of 12 months from when it was generated. All right, lastly, carriers are required to keep copies of driver vehicle inspection reports, also known as DVIRs. In another video, we broke down the DVIR process in detail. But in short, whether you're a property or a passenger carrying operation, the regulations, section 396.11 specifically, establish a process that drivers and carriers must follow when it comes to preparing and submitting DVIRs. The first step is that the driver prepares the DVIR, identifying the vehicle that was inspected, including any attached trailers, and listing any defects discovered by or reported to that driver on a particular day. Importantly, this would include situations where a driver becomes aware of a maintenance-related defect from a third party, such as a law enforcement officer during a roadside inspection. Once the driver prepares the DVIR, he or she must sign it and submit it to the operating motor carrier. This has historically been done on paper, but can also be accomplished electronically. Some of the electronic systems are even set up so that the DVIRs are automatically transmitted to the carrier's maintenance department, which can help facilitate a quicker turnaround on vehicle repairs. Now, for its part, once a carrier receives a DVIR from one of its drivers that lists a defect that's likely to affect the safety of that vehicle's operation, that carrier must not allow the CMV to operate again until the defect is corrected. Once it is corrected, then the carrier or its agent, for example, a mechanic, must sign off on the DVIR to certify that the repairs have been made. Carriers must retain copies of the DVIRs along with repair records in the vehicle's maintenance file. Once the repair is made and certified, then it's important that the drivers review the prior day's DVIR, if any, before operating that vehicle for that day to ensure that any such defects have been corrected. Carriers have an obligation under the regulations to retain DVIRs for a period of three months from the date they were generated. Now, missing DVIRs are a common contributor to fines and downgraded safety ratings in a DOT audit, so it's critical that carriers and their drivers follow this process. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this video. Generating and retaining up-to-date and complete vehicle maintenance files is a major component of every regulated carrier's DOT compliance program. Failing to keep compliant files can lead to significant fines in an audit, and more importantly, can create significant exposure in highway accident litigation. For even more in-depth information about these types of regulatory topics, be sure to check out our innovative online compliance courses for safety managers and for drivers over at trucksafeacademy.com. Also, be sure to check out our detailed compliance articles on our website at trucksafe.com and follow us on our various social media pages for the latest highway transportation news and analysis. Thanks for watching. Thank you.